Shepard. It's a pleasure to see you again. Today on review, we are looking at Mass Effect 3 for the Xbox 360, also available on the PS3 and PC. Mass Effect 3 is the core, the pinnacle of this overall story that's been built from Mass Effect 1, 2, and all the little random games from the iPad, iPod, and so on. So, in this review, I will not be giving away any Pacific story giveaways, mainly like the ending or so, so no worry, you can watch the review without worrying about knowing what happened exactly in detail. So, court, the story of Mass Effect 3 is take place six months after the event of the Y Vault, which was the DLC for Mass Effect 2. Where the court your shepherd, male or female, being more or less on trial for what he or she ended up doing in that DLC, and pretty much right in the middle of it, the weeper, a court, the invasion have started, and it pretty much you escaping Canada to go out into Granite Bay to try to figure out what happening, recruit more people to a overall army to build a item that will end up either destroying the weeper or some other things later on. So the gameplay itself is pretty much the same old routine of Mass Effect 2. The only distance here is some bringing back or adding more RPG net back to the Mass Effect series, which as some of you might know, a lot of RPG staple kind of got cut out of Mass Effect 2, but have we torn here in Mass Effect 3? Mainly the main ones would be the court now you have loot you can have again, which you will find armor and weapon within the game you can have, which you can put on your character to do this and that, and of course you can decorate it by changing this and corridors and whatnot. Also, you can buy armor and weapons in vending machines along the Citadel and other places, and you have modifications you can add to your gun to give it better stability, scopes, silence, so on. So you have that mid matting and modification of weapon and armor bat which was in Mass Effect 1. And of course on top of the weapon now you can of course upgrade your weapon which each gun can be upgraded to level 5 and can add random distant thing to it. And on top of buying all the guns and armor, all the original armor and gun from the Pat 2 uh, Mass Effect have we torn with all the DLC that you may or may not got to play at depending on if you actually bought the stuff or bought Collector Edition at this in the location. So all previous weapon and armor DLC is in Mass Effect 3 for free and you can upgrade yourself as you more or less see fit. And on the whole actual leveling side for your character, now it's fairly similar to the way it was in Mass Effect 2 with you taking points and putting in random attribute depending on what character you're leveling or whatnot. The distance here in now every four level of your skill tree, you really will have a skill tree which will give you two options for whatever skill you are leveling. We kind of add a little bit more in depth to building your character, and you can really build your character out in combat scenario that you want your character to be. Sadly, that's not really the case as far as the actual story is concerned here, because as previous iterations of Mass Effect, you will know your conversation trees are always deep interesting and complex. Any ifs, most of the time they kind of did go around in circles. But in Mass Effect 3, most of that I cut out. It usually you have one to three way to end a conversation and you have at the most three questions you can add that doesn't really go into a skill tree. You more ask a question, they reply to it and then you back to where you begin. It's not actually full conversation here. And of course you also continue having your Renegade and paragon -ness in the conversation which haven't changed at all the up and down. And you also have the quick time event that they introduced in Mass Effect 2. But in many cases with them, they seem to be forcing you down a one-way character because in some scenario you will be having to do a Renegade act and if you do not do the Renegade at, you will die. But don't get me wrong, it's very easy to stay fairly Pelagon in it, but don't expect to have like a 100% Pelagon waiting in it, because they will force you to do some hard choices. And when it comes down to the choices, that will the actual will Troy come from. You might not have choice in conversations anymore exactly, but in the overall event, you will be picking either do one thing or another, good or bad, which mainly play into your overall evil and good side.
website and you will get closure to the actual event of the side story that's been happening with true out Mass Effect, such as the Genophage or the conflict between the Gats and the Corians. And, and this here is where your choices actually matter for Mass Effect 1 and 2. Most of these will be character you have let go or whatnot will show up in certain cutscenes within the side stories and you will get closure to them, the event, and in many cases actually leave you scratching your head of what if. What if certain people in Mass Effect 2 didn't make it? How would it play out today? Such a pinnacle part of the story. We do not add replayability to Mass Effect 3, but it will make you want to go back and leap to Mass Effect 2 to train some decision to see how it would play out in 3. But and then you get to the court the end of the game, which you may or may not get closure depending on your attitude to this ending. And in many cases, you might be left more wondering. How do these scenes actually play out and if they any will at all, which may end up going into the opposably re-editing of the ending that Bio were doing at the time of the recording. But all that is kind of up in the air at the moment of what that is. So overall, you will get closer to the side missions. You will see certain character you wreck you. Your choice it does matter, but more matter if from the choice of Mass Effect 1 and 2, not exactly your choices in 3. 3 is a lot more focused and straight to the point about a lot of stuff. But on the other side of that, we have now Connect adding into the game. Which, when a lot of people think Connect, they don't think anything important. But it actually works fairly damn well in this. You, from the, you don't have to be loud or anything. You can pick up items, hack doors do combat scenario with your AI people. You can any do conversation tree by just reading what is on screen without having to push a button. It has such a level to the game and walk flawlessly. In many cases the connect might be a little iffy. In my case the connect doesn't really want to work for me properly for whatever reason. But in Mass Effect 3 I could be just barely talking out loud and will recognize while I'm healing. And this is the only real issue with the actual connect in a function of the if you play in this in a room with other people and if they read one of the sentences out loud or say something similar you might have them picking choices for you that you do not want to do. So I do not recommend playing it with a connect on if you're in a room with others. This is a private thing you do with you and your connect and try not to be dirty in any way, shape, or form. So don't make Lee all dance. I don't know if he will or not. But anyway, but outside of the connect and the actual story of the single player, you of course have multiplayer and we're in the which is pretty much horde mode. Not a lot have been added here. The only thing that made it this into any other horde mode is mainly the jobs and the classes and the leveling system. Because the leveling system for Mass Effect single player carry over completely in this. So you have the same in depth leveling system and you have the ability to play as every class from the original Mass Effect single player and then you will be rewarded points while along with your level which you can use to buy packs which will be randomized items might it be meta gel or gun or character because not all characters are unlocked at the outset mainly the human character for each class will be unlocked but if you want to play as such like a Korian or Quogan or Torian you will have to play the multiplayer and try to get enough money to actually buy the item and the items are completely randomized, but if you do not want to play the game over and over, you can call spend real money on buying the packs. From any will from 80 points to like 160 to 40, whatever the high amount is, I can't remember off the top of my head here. But, so you have replayability here, the only problem is that you might end up burning yourself out by the time you actually get a character you're wanting, since how well they are. But the multiplayer side of this inside the game is, like I said, pretty much straight up horde mode. The only distance here is only 11 level, which the last level at EVAT where you have to get to a zone and defend it for two minutes while you wait for EVAT to show up. But outside of the final level, every three level you will have a mission. Might it be eliminate a target, hack a terminals, or upload information, which will keep you on your toe every three levels. And you have the ability to set the parameters of the game, such as the five levels that is in the game out of default, while along with what enemy time types you want to fight, and of course how hard do you want to have it which is made up of silver, bronze, and gold with each one if you're able to complete will add more money and more affiliate to your level character. And each character can level up to level 20. Once you get to level 20 you can either keep your character 
or you can import it into Mass Effect 3, which will overall add to your galactic readiness, which playing the multiplayer will also add to your galactic readiness, which end up playing a factor within the ending scenario of the actual single player game. So sadly, you actually gotta play the multiplayer if you want to get the best out of the single player. But on the other side of it, you can court play that alone if you so desire, or up to four other teammates. So, overall, Mass Effect 3 might be a little bit of a letdown in many places. It brings closure to other, and then on the other side of Fetcher, it leaves you scratching your head. But it's still a fantastic game across the board, any with a lot of a shortcoming. So, overall, I give Mass Effect 3, I've been counting. Anything in particular? 3 a 5 out of 5.